Hello Grinder School, this is Elliot. Uh, I am making my first video series. It's a simple series but integral to uh, the foundations of a poker player. Um, so many times have I seen hands posted where there's not one fish at the table at the micros. They're all playing against like regulars which is a very very bad decision or very very bad table selection when trying to build a role you want to be playing against the the worst players at your stake for the highest stake you can play um, so we're going to be looking at five different player types so the passive fish the knit aggro fish or maniac uh, weak regs and in between fish uh, the goal is to work out and exploit find out what these each one of these players weaknesses are and then take that forward and uh, exploit them because what's quite important is when you start playing against solid regulars each one of them started off as one of these type of players and they still have a little bit of that still in them so if you can see a weakness on a large scale at first so the passive fish you will then see that in a in a regular later down the line they'll just have a, a little bit more a little bit less I should say exploitation so first we look at how to exploit the most obvious players and then as you move up in stakes you you take what you've learned and you apply it to exploit the uh, the regulars at your level so it's the most important thing you've got to get these fundamentals down um, so there we go and then once we've identified these players who want to do table selection we want to sit with these weak players we don't want to just um, sit on a table and there be regulars there we actually want to purposely go out find these players and take their money and once we've found the correct table we want to have the right seat selection there's um, so many times I see hands posted especially in characters forum where I've seen players post a hand and they've got stats on all the players in the hand and not one of them is a fish so it's pretty fundamental and these are people playing at, um, at 5 and L so I've actually just just now looked through the lobby and I found about six tables at 10 and L which all had position on the fish so there's literally no excuse to get the best seats and get the best table selection um, the main goal for the end of this series is to then work out what you're going to do against each fish at this level um, and then adjust your play to the table conditions so we know how to play against each each player as as they leave or join you know and join the table so that's kind of the end goal is to learn how to exploit all the fish and adjust to different fish coming in and out or regulars or nits or whatever or whatever we can find that's kind of like the main goal uh, to be a successful grinder at um, 2 to 10 and now so the first player we're gonna oh and actually this is what I want to say as well for me I think is we need to be playing um, regular tables not zoom I don't advocate playing zoom until you at the highest stakes the reason for that is that you can find fish and weaker players in the lobby um, you don't need to be playing zoom you don't need to be putting tons and tons of volume in you need to be finding very weak fish and you need to be taking their money and moving on and you should literally just be rolling tables in and out as you stack fish or if they leave you should be closing that table and moving on to the next table I do play zoom but I play higher a higher level of zoom and the reason for that is sometimes there is just no good tables so you there will be fish in the zoom pool you've just got to find them and play with them I always get a bit sad when I see a maniac in the zoom pool and they leave straight away once that hands over so for me I like to go and find these players and when I was grinding 10 and L that's all I ever did is went and found weaker players and I built my role very very quickly so it is and also you're paying you the games are easier so you're actually playing for a stake where you can 
build your role but learn at the same time rather than zoom where you will be your win rate will be lower you won't have great see on you know position on the fish all the time and you won't be improving your game as much um, or it'll be holding you back to move up so for me definitely regular tables find those fish and fry those fish okay so the next slide first uh, fish that we're gonna the first player type the weaker player type the first fish is the uh, passive fish and they kind of come in two kind of brands you've got the fit or fold fish and you've got the calling stations so this is the um, if you can look at the HUD that I've got up this is the more basic HUD that I'll be using for the grinder school videos for the moment when we're playing smaller stakes so I'm just going to quickly go through um, what I've got so obviously got name and then we've got the amount of hands on a player and then we've got showdown and then made money at showdown and we've got VPIP on the second layer and then PFR preflop raise and then post op aggression 3 bet fold to 3 bet and then we've got fold big blind versus small blind steal uh, continuation bet and then fold to, fold to C bet flop and turn so the two things that I want to point out for both these player types is the showdown and the uh, fold to see bet so the fit or fold player will often have a, a lower showdown so as you can see the player on the on the left hand side has a 28 percent um, showdown which is actually reasonably high it's not totally out of order i would say something quite tight is a 20 22% or lower and anything above 30 is is quite a station a calling station so you can see on the right hand side this guy the uh, the calling station goes to showdown 54% of the time and he has a VPRP of 69 so they are he is opening with he's calling tons of hands and going to showdown often and then the second stat I want to point out is the uh, fold to see bet stat which is for the fit or fold is really high so 60% is absolutely fit or fold they are just calling and then and then folding straight away and then the guy our calling station on the on the right hand side they have a fold to see bet of 27 which is tiny they are literally calling and calling and calling and they can't stop calling so um, both these players share the same style pre-flop so they love to call they will literally call more or less any raise and they will also limp a ton to open limp for one big blind and they will cold call all your opens and then they they have a very 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 tight raising range meaning they only open up with the you know the top well this guy on the left is opening up with four percent so that is essentially ace queen plus jacks plus roughly around about that maybe ace jack suited and the guy our calling station has a preflop raise of one which means he's he's opening aces and that's about it um, so they both want to see flops but post flop they're a different beast uh, so this is what's really important you must be aware of these player types so the fit or fold guy you can just bluff them constantly and you can bluff them very very wide um, which is which is great and they that is a, almost a license to print money and then our calling station you can really only value town them you cannot you cannot bluff these guys they are literally unbluffable they will go to showdown well as you can see 69 PFR so they're playing around two-thirds of the deck and they're going to showdown with just over half of that which is insane and they will be absolutely burning through their money um, so we can only value town these players so these guys are quite obvious in their stats um, this is hands that I've data collected over a long time playing with diff these two players um, but sometimes we have no clue what these players are like as you sit down at a table you haven't had any 
hands on these players. So the most important thing is you must start to observe these players. And as you can see, this is my note system that I copy and paste into my holder manager. So I have like a blank um, note system that will say reads, pre-flop and post-flop. I copy and paste this in. And then as soon as I know something about the player, I will write. So for example, the fit and fold, I've just got FOF for reads and they pre-flop, they limp fold. So a fit or fold person will, they will be more inclined to limp fold than limp call. So you can sort of start to get an idea that they're fit or fold. And then obviously if they, um, if you see bet them a ton and their stats start going up and they're not calling, then obviously they're fit or fold, um, which is really important. So for me, I have two tags. I have uh, a light green for fit or fold and then a dark green for calling station. So they're both green. So green is go, go get them. Um, but I have um, two different types because obviously you burn money against one. And then the calling station, obviously you've got read, so I just write station. And then pre-flop, for example, I've seen this player call a three bet with six five suited. So obviously that's not something you would do very often um, unless they're a complete maniac. But um, so six, so you can see that they're a station of some kind. And then also post flop, I've got they've called three streets with third pair. So straight away, we know what they're doing. So pay attention to showdown and see if your fit or fold person called with some equity or, or something like that. So that's that's very important when you're when you don't know what type of players um, you're playing against. So you want to start building up those reads. Uh, straight away and naming those players okay so seat position for the calling station we want our Jesus seat in the uh, top picture where we want the calling station in um, in the cutoff position and then we don't mind if they're in the M MP position but we want them to essentially to our right we want them to be we want them to we want to act straight after them we want to be the first person to act after them so we can have ultimate position on this fish and we can literally abuse and abuse and abuse um, and we also want to value town them um, with the fit of fold player ideally we want them in the cutoff position as well it's always best to have position on the fish rather than not have position on the fish but because they're fit or fold, they can be in the small blind and the big blind position because they fold. And the plan is you want to play as many hands as possible. That's plus EV. And if you're if you have the calling station to your left, you have to open less hands because you can't profitably see that because they will just call you down. And you will miss a lot of flops but against the fit or fold player you don't mind you can open up and they will just look down at their trash that they have and just fold so we don't mind them being on our left and also we don't mind them being in the blinds because we can open you know quite a large amount on the blinds we could open minimum 3x maybe 4x if they're sat there with a wide range of hands and we can we can see bet most flops and we can take down easy profit against them so calling stations on your right fit or fold obviously on your right but it's not the end of the world if they're on your left okay so that's important seat positions for the, these two types of players okay so the thing that you'll be doing mostly against these players is you will be um, either opening and they will call you or you'll be ISOing them. So ISO is when you make an isolation raise, they limp for one big blind and you um, you raise that limp you will um, to, to isolate the player. So in the example or the, the what I give here is that they will probably limp for one big blind or they will limp for one big blind and then you will make it three big blinds plus one big blind per limper so sometimes you may get more limpers but for this example we're just 
saying that there's one limper. So we would make it one big blind and another three big blinds on top of that. Now I put minimum in brackets and the reason I say that is that if you have an absolute station, you can make it more. You could possibly add another, you know, five big blinds plus one big blind per limper because these players will probably call you. So you want to make these extra little big blinds so you can build the pot early so you can either value town them or see bet and take it away. So it's just something to bear in mind as you as you uh, find these players. Sometimes they won't, they won't call for more than four so you kind of got to work it out against them. That's why it's really good to sit on a regular table so you can sit and test this against them and you're, you can be making notes about what they call. So it's quite a quite an important thing to do so against the fit or fault players when we uh, make a c bet against them when we have little value we want a c bet quite small so probably half pot um, and the reason for that is that they will just fold super super often that we don't have to make a large bet or anything like that um, and then when we do have value we will c bet large and the reason for that is that they're, if they're going to fold, they're going to fold anyway. But if they have anything of any value, they will call. So you want to make that bet as large as possible. And eventually you want to bet turn, bet river as well. Quite big with the plan of stacking the, uh, the fish. So it's super important to get your bet sizing quite high. I've got an example uh, later on of someone who doesn't bet very well and they lose value against the fish um, again with the va with the uh, calling stations we want to bet large with value and we want to bet smaller with some solid equity so good flush draws good straight draws um, <coughs> and some under pairs to the top pair things like that so we have solid equity in the hand they're going to call us we can build a pot with our flush draws and uh, straight draws which we can then have a larger pot to then make a big bet on the river if we hit um, so i think that's quite important to build those pots if they're really 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 stationary then maybe we can actually check behind with some weaker flush draws um, just because they're going to call us anyway so it'd be not, you know anything with sort of good showdown value as well so ace ace x flush draw is, is a good Good one to bet because we, we probably have them beat with an ace anyway because they're just calling down with junk and gut shots and loads of weird stuff so we're actually value betting when we when we bet those, that those strong flush draws so just something to bear in mind there's also we can delay c bet against these players so if they check to us twice um there is a possibility that we can that we can put a delay c bet in there so they've they've shown weakness twice, and we can probably try and try and take away the pot, but not make it super big pot size or anything like that. So that's that's something that's 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 worth bearing in mind on the turn. Um, I just want to quickly show you this um, this fold equity. So if we c bet half the pot, we only need that bet. We only need them to fold 33% of the time. So you can see the player, fit or fold player on the um, on the left, they fold 60% and 45% on the uh, turn. So if, if we're double barreling half pot for both streets, we're just printing money against these guys with um, if we have no value in our hands at all, because we only need these bets to succeed 33% of the time. And they're folding well over that. So it's really important to understand that math and why we why we bet this amount against these players but if you look at the calling station they they actually fold a lot less than that so you are not printing money against them you're actually burning money so this is just a little idea and if you bet less so you need that bet to succeed less than that they're just going to call you more so it's just something to to bear in mind um, also for two an hour to ten an hour or maybe maybe not even 10 now but two to five um, you should be okay with ISOing um, because not many people are going to fight back what you might get is more people calling you 
so just bear that in mind but the most important thing is to look left before you do an ISO and see if there is someone who is going to take advantage of you or call you so plan plan your range to ISO as and when you do that um, there's a good section in Carita's book um, called the ISO triangle I'm not going to go into it because I don't want it. It's quite an in-depth chapter. And he talks a lot about how to uh, purposely plan an ISO and how to, how to what parts of your range to call and all that kind of stuff. So go on his website or email him or PM him about his, um, about his book because it is really good for that reason. So just my basic advice is look left before you do an ISO just so you can see if anybody's going to give you any trouble or three bet you like this if there's a maniac don't ISO because they will just make your life a misery um, don't ISO with weak hands I should say so yeah that's something to bear in mind um, this is also with when when you open and they call you want to take this exact strategy as well because it's essentially you've opened for a little bit less than what you would when they've ISO'd and they've limped so just just take the same strategy and apply it for both player types so this is a rough ISO range for um, for the different player types so the stations you want to have a stronger range you want to have something that connects well and you want to have something that can that can have good equity and you can barrel on and make decent hands so this this range needs to be tighter um, so have a look at this and um, sort of use this is sort of a recommended range sometimes you can change it it's not set in stone but this is something that I've kind of whipped up that I think is just a good outline strategy so all the red you can um, ISO the stations with and then the uh, red and green is for the fit or fold players so you can be a lot more wider with the fit and fold players um, because it's going to fold often you don't want to go crazy because people start to notice um, but you want to have a very decent range there um, to attack these player types so that's the uh, that's the ranges um, bear in mind that if you're in position these ranges can, can be a little bit um, sorry bear in mind that this is for in position if you're out of position you want to tighten these ranges ever so much because you have to act before the um, the fish so you can see bet and you may get called but the thing is the stations they have checked if you're in position so you have that extra tiny little bit of information so it is important to narrow your ranges ever so slightly if you're out of position and um, and just go there also just bear in mind who's in between you like I said look left and just work out if anybody else is going to give you problems but most of the time at the lower levels you should be okay uh, in the higher levels people will three bet you because they're noticing that you're stealing and they'll three bet you a lot more so it's just something to bear in mind but these are the sort of recommended ranges for the two player types um, this is my how much money I have made just by doing ISOs alone so you can see how profitable it is to completely just ISO these players all the time it is it is a license to print money so that's like I say go find these figures find these players on on regular tables and just constantly value town them and constantly ISO and take them down just work out which player type they are first so that's just to prove that it does work okay so if these players raise pre-flop they have an extremely tight range like super tight so I've actually um, put it at the top so they have aces to tens ace king king queen suited and ace queen so if they raise this is roughly their range and to be honest most will be even tighter than that I've seen players limp with queens and aces and all sorts so they do do this so when you call 
you want to have a very tight calling range versus them. You can 3-bet aces and kings only and do not 3-bet bluff these guys because they don't care. They, they just have value and also these guys don't fold so you're not going to get any folds out of them and they won't fold strong hands anyway so you're literally just being you're being linear in the sense that you're just three betting for value and the only hands you can really three bet for value are aces and kings the rest of it you can limp behind so that all the green is um, if you're in position and it's early position versus a limper and if you in the blue you can add if you're on the button and things like that so just because their range is so wide uh, sorry so so tight that you that you need hands so you need implied odds hands something that is going to flop a flush going to flop sets going to flop flushes and straight draws things like that so anything with implied odds because if you hit versus these players you are pretty guaranteed to get quite a lot of money out of them hopefully they're stack so that is very important so don't be calling with king queen off don't be calling with ace jack off because those hands will be dominated and it's your own fault if you start calling with those hands just because they look pretty and you think that they're still fish they are fish but they're fish if they're raising with an extremely strong range so um yeah, just, just bear that in mind. Okay. Also, this is something that I noticed today that um, if you lose with a strong hand, so for example, this is this is very obvious and very simple, but aces against every single hand in the entire of the rest of the range only has 85% equity against. And there's a lot of time you will get aces in pre and you will lose against these players. And that is something mentally game on the mental game to be celebrated because if these guys weren't winning this way they wouldn't be in the game they don't have to play so they don't care the fact that they have just won and doubled you through um, and you've doubled them up is great for them because they stay in the game ever so slightly longer you know they may have just bust someone on another table, got up and left, sat down at your table, and then you get to bust them. So you have to be you have to bear in mind that variance will get you in this game and it will get you quite often, especially with someone players like this. But over the long run you will make tons and tons of cash out of them. In the short term you may lose and you may lose with great hands and you they may hit that perfect river card and they will stack you. But that is the way it is. But the most important thing, and I saw this today, I was playing today, and they, a guy got stacked, and he typed in the chat, like, um, you know, hope you die of cancer, stuff like that, which is insane, because this guy, you know, he's the, 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 the fishy type player, he's just sat there playing, you know, and he may have sucked out on someone, and he's probably happy, and then this guy's getting all grumpy and in his face, and this person, you may be ruining their experience and you know the truth is you don't want to tap on the fishbowl you don't want to scare these people off or give them a bad experience because they're they're part of the the um ecosystem of the of a of our poker world so we need these players in the game so you know if you just lose type nice hand sometimes if they sometimes i'll sit down and they chat in the chat box you just chat back to them and they will be like, oh, you know, oh, good hand, are oh, you, you did really, you know, oh, good catch, blah, 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 blah. And they, and they will, they love, love you for it. And sometimes they may, may even play like even worse because they like you. So never, never like be nasty to these people in chat is such a waste of time. I think if, you know, you can chat, you can chat in the chat box to regulars because regulars are there anyway so it's okay to tilt the regulars because they're going to play but don't tilt or no don't slag off the um the fishbowl just don't do it um, okay cool so i think i'm going to try and pull up some hands and i'm going to just go through a few examples 
of uh, hands that I've um, played or seen people play just to prove a few of these points so um, yeah we'll be back in a sec okay this is uh, hand example number one um, our uh, player is up here um, there's a 5311 they go to showdown 42 percent of the time and they have very low fold to see but uh, they have um, we only have 58 percent 58 hands but we get a good idea of what they like unfortunately i showing their name i don't know quite how to turn it off uh, so i apologize if you're watching but you may learn something so there you go um so yeah this is someone we're definitely looking to target it's 50 nl so you don't often to get to get really good position on the fish so actually they're in the the worst place for me but a 50 nl i will take a fish on a table so perfect for us they uh, they limp for one big blind everybody folds I ISO to five big blinds and the big blind folds and they call so I flop top pair on a three flush board and I bet almost pot straight into them and and they call so my plan on from now on is to bet fold at any point so at the moment I'm just bet 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 but if they raise at any point they're a passive player I don't mind folding so my top pair essentially turns into garbage if they raise so again fine turn card for me not happy against King Jack but you've got to consider their range is quite wide they've got tons of random King X they've got a load of flush draws uh, they even have a pair that they're just not going to fold so we're just going to try and value town them so I bet 15 into 16 and they call again the uh, river is blank so um, I choose to shove the rest in the, the this is great in terms of bet size because they're getting such a good price to call even though it's probably incorrect but they're all almost pot committed as well so if I bet less on earlier streets this shove would be like a pot shove I shove a pot so it is harder for them to call now there's so much money in the middle they're almost compelled to call um, so they do call and they call with jack eight so they call with second pair and a flush draw you know not even nut flush draw so you know I could already have them beat or something like that so they're very hopeful and they don't have an idea of relative hand value they just think about their hand on one level there was one thing I did think about this hand that if they do have a flush draw and they're just going to fold river but they may 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 bluff if I check that's the only thing I did think about when looking looking back at this hand but I think it's probably better to, to bet and hope that they call with something like they have than just fold so I think it's okay to shove the, the river there for value so that's one hand of just betting for value betting strong with your um, with your main hands with your made hands for value so there's a good example um, and we'll move on to another one okay, hand number two so this is an example of what happens when a passive fish raises in a hand so our hero is this player in the big blind and this is the target player here the fish shows a 58 zero uh, quite passive goes to show down a ton folds the sea bets quite uh, not a lot so he's definitely someone that we need to attack um, so they limp which is pretty standard for that type of player and our uh, our hero in the hand isolates the player 
which is totally cool. And they cool. So this, I think I said this player's got ace, ace king, and um, he c bets uh, quite large, which is good. Possibly go ever so slightly more, maybe, but I think that's okay. And the player calls. So all fine and dandy. And again, this player should have the the uh, plan of bet folding uh, versus this player type. So they see bet again. This is too small. It should be bigger than this. It should be at least three, three fifty, because you want to be trying to get stacks in by the river. Um, if they call this, there won't be a be just about a pot size shove. So you want it a little bit more than that. Um, and anyway, so the player then raises. So alarm bells should be going off in this guy's head. Like what is a passive person raising with here? Are they bluffing? Do these players bluff? No, they don't. They call down. So to be honest, he should look at his ace king and go, right, there's possible sets and there's straights. So which is all in this guy's range. Um, so this is just a little lesson. What this player does, which I think is horrendous, is they shove. Um, so you can't be shoving against a player like this because they call down. They don't get aggressive. When they do get aggressive, you just need to fold. Okay, so it's pretty simple. Um, you know, when we look at aggressive fish, it's a different ball game because they will raise with anything. So we completely change our mindset. But against someone who's really tight, it's very obvious that they're really tight and they don't get aggressive very often, just fold. It's easy. So anyway, they shove. Um, you know, you could maybe, maybe argue that you could call because you do have a you have a gut shot. Possibly you could argue that, but you'd be definitely be looking to check fold river. But anyway, they shove, so I don't like the shove, I think it's pretty bad. Um, because you know what are they calling you with they don't think they're calling you with you know they're not raising King Jack they're gonna call you down with King Jack so anyway, just that to bear that in mind so anyway they call and the player flips over six seven for a turn straight and this guy stacked off and he might say oh that was so unlucky I can't believe the fish got there but you know the reality is is that you know the evidence was there and they um, they chose to ignore it and they basically essentially turned into a fish themselves by uh, I apologize if this is you Jakey but um, this is just some advice <laughs> but um, you know you you went back to level one and you just thought of your hand in exact value and you just thought they're a fish you know I, I deserve to win and I'll take the money down so it's just something that's really important to um, to think about okay so when these guys raise they they have value they're not bluffing they're not semi bluffing they have value same when they open like for example this guy has a zero percent naught percent pfr so he just he's not aggressive with anything so something to bear in mind um as you as you get into post lop with these with these players okay okay last hand of the session we have our fishy recreational player in the small blind and this is the hero here in uh, in the big blind everybody folds and our fish passive fish opens so this does mean that they have a stronger range here than most who open in this small blind um, even if it's just a min raise these guys don't raise very often so we're putting strong broadways and decent pocket pairs in their range and our player flats now I'm just going to show you what they hold because it's important to show the rest of the hand but as our read shows they have ace queen so even for a min raise they're you know they probably should be raising a little bit more even in the um even in the small blind here i think 10 jack off is pretty okay defend because the of you know the odds they're getting is a uh, three to one uh, they 25% on a call um, and they and they have position 
and they also they can if they make a decent hand they can stack the player which is more important he flops a straight and they have top two uh, sorry two pair uh, okay and the fish leads out for pot almost pot so to me this is the c bet stat that i'm circling here it's 36 which means that they only see bet with value um, which is really important so get your mindset in working out what these players do and obviously our guys flop straight here and he does raise which i really really like i think that's that's good and our fish calls so we now have eight and we have 22 behind almost our fish checks and he bets or they bet the big blind bets almost five into almost nine which i think is pretty bad it's like a half pot bet you want to be setting up stacks a lot earlier than this um, you should be going maybe something like six six fifty because they've bet and called on this board i know this might look scary to them but you want to build this pot so maybe just a little bit more you want to you want to have like almost 70 percent of a pot left to just put in it makes the it makes it such so easy for them to call right on the river so anyway they do call and they have a pot size um bet left here into 18 so if they bet more it would have been a lot easier shove um what is the tragedy is that he bets eight into 18 which kind of makes me sick a little bit so there's all this value this guy's deeper than him this should be a bet on the turn and the river a lot earlier to build this pot is that he's got the nuts it's just a bit like oh god so not and especially because they've got such a strong range is the reason they've got a strong range because they, they were the preflop laser that this is why they should be betting more um, because their range is so strong so anyway they call he's green and he missed and he lost he missed the nine dollars that could have been could have been his so just to, to emphasize you must be value betting and value betting very effectively versus these player types so that's the last hand it's the first video in the series i uh, hope you guys enjoyed it leave me some feedback any notes that'd be really cool um i think for the next episode i'm going to do a live play video um probably two and l and five and l so we can see these concepts in in real time play so um yeah just just carry on watching all right well thanks for watching guys it's been uh, it's been good uh, take care all right bye